I haven't made a movie in a few weeks. It's been slam busy at work and parts still haven't showed up for the Dragoneer. But I thought we'd pull out this transfer case because it's got to come out, I guess. And the reason that it's got to come out right now is because even though I want it to just hook a drive line up to it and be able to just temporarily move this rig around once I get it running. I've been told by a lot of people and I don't know, the internet kind of tells you but not really in very good detail that you can't even drive or move these quadra tracks without the front drive shaft and obviously we got the straight axle and all that in here. So, um, We've got a buddy who's sending me a two-wheel drive kit. Hopefully that'll work on this Turbo 400. So that'll solve our movability here for a little while anyways. Our next problem is, is that pumpkin's like, you know, on the passenger side. So it's going to be a really janky driveline mess until I find a uh, centered rear end for it. But that shouldn't be too tough. Anyways, my thoughts are is to get this beast out of here and then uh, pull them apart and see what makes this thing so uh, so unique to where you can't move it around in four-wheel drive. And maybe I'll find out that it was a myth, myth and I could have moved it around. I don't know. But at this point, it's got to come out anyways, so we'll yank her out. Um, I think the first thing we're gonna have to do is pull that speedometer cable, disconnect the uh, low range uh, shift mechanism thingy. And then I guess there's like four bolts. I think that's one of them way back there. That kind of holds this thing together. Um, I don't think it's really got a whole lot to it, but I don't know how heavy it is. So, more than likely, it's just gonna fall to the ground and make a big mess. And that's okay with me. And like I said, we'll rip her apart. I do know that this big bad boy right here is the uh, low range. Um, the little bit of research that I can, I found about them is uh, some of them didn't have this. And if they didn't have it, they didn't have the low range handle under the seat, so. But uh, we're more interested in what's going on in here and what makes this thing so unique. But I'll quit rattling off here and uh, get these few things pulled apart and drain the oil out of it and get her out of here so we can have a look together. Maybe we can figure it out because I couldn't find any videos or any solid information about it. So we'll rip it apart and have a look. Well, hopefully the heater's not too loud in the background. But is that time of year where it's cold and snowy and all that good fun stuff. See if I can make an ultra uber mess here. Probably not even any oil in it. Oh, oh no. She's chugging. She's got some oil in her. The other thing I've been told about, well, I've read about them, I haven't really been told, but apparently people go through chains on these things like they're free. So, I guess the moral of the story is, is quadra track transmissions aren't, transfer cases aren't very good. I don't know. Like I said, I can't really tell you that I've had one and really paid much attention to it. I mean, I did have a uh, Golden Eagle J10 truck. That was quadra track, but I don't remember it giving me any problems. And it had quite the built uh, 401 in it. And um, I drove it for about a year. And other than I tried to get smart and put manual hubs on it, and I know it wouldn't move. You know, so that's my only experience saying that. I know these transfer cases have something weird in them, but I thought maybe the transfer cases just wore out in that Golden Eagle. I didn't think it was actually some sort of actual design on them. But, uh, all right, well, that's probably drained enough for me. I 
just assume when it goes smash into the ground here in a little bit that it doesn't spill a bunch of oil all over the floor. My crappy uh, channel locks here. Oh. No. No. Huh. Well, it looks like she's. Stuck in there, maybe. Come on now. There we go. Alright. So they got that cable just zip tied to that. I'm assuming that's not factory. And, um, hmm. Well, maybe to just make short work out of that. Uh, 916, I guess. Yep. I don't know if well, it didn't work. that bad boy at least I'll have another button. All right well as far as I can tell there's four bolts to hold this crap on here. I already took the one out on the very top. I left that one in there for safety measures so it doesn't crush my dome while I'm under here. Look at that. GMC. A lot of those, uh, a lot of you AMC purist people, which I'm sure none of you actually watch any of these videos because you told me you didn't. But, uh, you know, the arguing fact of me putting an LS and an AMX is just totally outrageous. Well, as I said before, I'm pretty sure AMC put Pontiac Iron Duke four cylinders and Pontiac TH350s and some of those little American Spirit cars and whatnot. And, you know, I guess Jeep, you can argue about the whole AMC Jeep stuff, but still, they put Chevy transmissions in these too. <clears throat> and I know somebody told me the factory Borg Warner big old M12 cast iron automatic that was in that was was a Ford transmission designed for ja uh, Jaguars and stuff, but I don't know that for sure. And I guess it doesn't really matter to me. You could put a, a Chrysler transmission just like they've already done in all the mid-70 AMCs with their Torque Commander, AKA Torque Flight. But uh, anyways, I'm not gonna ramble on about that too much. But I am going to hope that so many Jeep guys, because I will spam your Facebook groups with this video, will actually watch this and maybe learn me a thing or two about these quadra tracks, because I'm sure I'm going to make a fool of myself trying to figure it out. But uh, anyways, so I think there's four bolts to hold it on, and uh, um, I'm going to put some cardboard and some crap down so it doesn't put a dent in the floor here. And, Hit it with a hammer and see if it falls out. Well, I'm being semi-smart. I had to use the jack, sort of. And I do mean sort of. Let's see. Oh, if I put my light there. And try to hold the camera. Yeah. 
Dan. get this pig dragged out of here and we'll start tearing it apart and trying to figure it out. Well, honestly, that wasn't too bad. If uh, you count the drive lines, if I would have had those to take off, this tech took maybe 30 minutes to get this thing out. So. Alright, well anyways, here's my problemo with this thing so they say even if you take the front drive shaft off this thing won't move because by the magic of Borg Warner somehow this has some sort of something or another in it that keeps it from moving but these are locked together and don't seem to have any, you know, they don't seem to have any kind of planetarium or, I don't know, clutch disc or something in there to stop them from doing anything. So, that's why we're going to rip it apart and have a look for ourselves. Besides that, if uh, you change the chain as often as a lot of you guys say on the internet you do, then it should be pretty easy to change the chain in, right? Well, one slightly used low range. I'm sure somebody out there is going to say they need this. And if you need this, then you should already know by now how to get a hold of me. And don't worry, after 90 days I'll throw it in the trash. Alright, well that was pretty simple. I guess I need to pull that big uh, clip out of there. See if that thing will come off and then unbolt the... Uh, that thing, the yoke, and uh, it's probably got to be pressed off or something. And then unbolt all these bolts and it should be easy peasy. Oh, one thing I forgot to say, um, if you are pulling this out because you want to save it, there is a bolt right there that holds these like vacuum lines. You might want to not cut those off like I did because I'm not going to be using this. Alright, before I get too far along and forget to videotape any of this madness, I took all the bolts out. And just to get this bolt out, I had to take the, uh, I don't know, four-wheel drive, emergency indicator, sensor thingy out. That thing. And I had to take that plate off, and then I had to knock the vacuum poopy out of there, this thing. And then this little arm is hooked in there, like that. And there's some little e-clips on either side of that arm that hold it together so the arm goes on something like that there anyways not that it really matters but uh, I thought I'd just show that before I got too carried away I'm not really sure if I had to pull the yokes of course I'm gonna try it the hard way first and try to separate it without the yokes but I think I gotta pull these things whatever they are so uh, yeah, I'll get this pulled apart and we'll have a look. Okay, well, surprisingly enough, uh, that come apart real easy. Well, there's definitely some sort of weird hoopty thing in here. That's a heck of a chain to break. All you Jeep guys that are breaking them. I'm not saying they're impossible to break, but my goodness. Alright, well, um. Nice 
still haven't uh, figured out what's going on here yet, so uh, yeah, we'll pull all these little bolts out and tear apart a little further and see what else is in there. All right, well, we're down to the nitty gritty here. Got these little 12.516 things removed. Uh huh. Yep, just as I expect. I have no idea. Some of those really cool, uh, what do you call those, like uh, pressure washers. Uh huh. Yep, some sort of spiral, and uh, oh, there is a planetarium here. I'll be. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how this thing works, but that's kind of cool, I guess. So I guess the front. Well, somebody once told me a while ago that the front, that these Jeeps are primarily like a front wheel drive and the rear wheels is what locks together so that's why you can't uh, unlock the hubs and maybe he was right. I don't know. Now here's the next question. How easy is it to change the chain, the change the actual chain in this thing. I don't know, because I'm not going to pull it apart. But if I had to take some sort of guess, I'm going to say probably not very hard. So, uh, yeah, this took me less than an hour to pull it out, make a mess on the floor, rip it apart and see this hidden planetarium, this secret planetarium for myself and make an assumption that um, everything I was told wasn't a lie, which I don't know. I still don't know how it works, but uh, we're just going to guess that it uh, this weird spiral thing does some spiral stuff in here and these uh, weird uh, cupped uh, pressure bushings push down and friction lock it together uh, so I don't know something like that but uh, it'll be the garbage's problem it, it can figure it out from here I think that's enough for me so uh, I guess uh, those are all those people that told me that it wouldn't work uh, were right so kudos to you guys well uh, I know we didn't learn anything and I know this isn't starting the 360 or anything yet but uh, hopefully parts will be here for the 360 so we can get it done and get it running but uh, uh, I should have the two wheel drive conversion for the 400 so that'll be interesting to put together and you know get a drive line for it and I did order some new tires for it so Get some tires, get some wheels on it, get the brakes blood, and get that 360 running. And once we do all that, then there's a couple cool upgrades we're going to do to this old AMC engine. But uh, before I talk about them and say what they're exactly going to be, i got to do some more research and get some more parts, of course. But uh, I think it's going to be really neat, and it's going to be something really fun for pretty much all you AMC V8 guys and uh, and then no it's not the turbo we already know that but uh, this will kind of be cool with the turbo another cool upgrade but this upgrade could be just a upgrade that any AMC V8 guy hopefully can do but like I said we'll uh, see how it goes but I'm gonna attempt to do that conversion we're gonna call it onto this AMC engine and uh, see if I can get it to work and if I can then I'll share the secrets with you but until then thanks for watching and uh, if you don't already know there's a Facebook group page for this channel um, you just look up uh, 68 underscore AMX underscore LS and the Facebook groups and it's a free group I don't even think uh, you have to do anything to become a member it should all be free you shouldn't even have to answer questions so check it out 
a lot of the stuff that I sell on there or if you have questions ask me personally it's a lot easier just to get a hold of me on that and that way you can look up those AMC motor mounts that we got in the mix and uh, type 3 will be out here soon so until the next video thanks for watching